Right over here. Yeah, it's 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 in the corner. Just just, just okay. Just okay. Okay. Try try to keep your fingers away, cause it oh it'll go for you. Okay. Well, I'll I'll try and sort of block the doorway so that it can't come this way. Okay. Um, I've I prop the the front of the cage open. Just, just come come on. Yep, come oh, on now. Oh, yeah, e- just, easy yep, easy just easy. Oh, okay okay okay. Okay. Just gonna just gonna get the stick. See if we can maybe just, just get the stick just behind yeah. and yeah. Just come on, come on now. Come on. <laughs> okay, okay. It's okay. It's okay. The snackies. Okay. 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 Yeah, I, think, I think. I think. we're good. Just gently lower the. Whew. Whew. Two weeks of just letting my brain off the. Off the leash to do whatever in in place of our usual episodes has uh, required a bit of wrangling. It has, but now we're both here, so it's certainly easier to get it back in the box. Just about. Yeah. Right, okay. Shall we? Let's. Greetings, strangers, queer and pleasant. I'm not Laura Kate Magnet Dale. And I'm not Jane Eris Magnet Dale. And welcome to another episode of Queer and Pleasant Strangers. It's a podcast where two queer trans ladies have a bit of a catch up and a chat about our weeks and the media we've consumed and do some silly voices and skits. Yeah. And both of us are very sleepy. We're both very sleepy. We we are both we are both a combination of 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 sleepy from late work plus mm. illness and we, the, the sleepies have got. They like grips on us. We, we we finally got the Rona. We finally did. It got us after two and a plus years. Yeah, we're both doing all right, but yeah, the, the sleepies are Thanks, definitely. Vaccine. Yeah, thank you, vaccine. Vaccines are great. They have definitely. We've definitely yeah. had it less bad than others, but. Uh... Yes. Plus masks. We mask everywhere. So. Indeed. Um, both both in the vaccine, put it over your face sense, and the autism me sense. Uh, ah, mask ha, jokes. Ha, ha, ha. Masking. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, we've got like three weeks of material to chat about. Indeed, and I suspect we're going to sort of be a little bit quick on some of it because we're very sleepy. And also because it happened two weeks ago and I don't really remember, I'll be honest. Yeah. So should we start with what we've been what we've been playing? What have we been playing? Do you want to start with something you've played? Um, let me find something I've played. What Tell have I played? Thing you've played. Um, the main thing I've played is I started playing a game called Nobody Saves the World. Nobody? Yeah. Oh. Um, I'm not super far into it, I'm maybe like three hours into it, but the gist is that you wake up in this fantasy setting and you are this sort of very generic looking human-esque person. You are just completely one shade of colour with no clothes on and no eyes, and you are you are the most blank slate you could possibly be. Okay. And you have no idea who you are or where you came from. Uh-huh. But the world needs saving. And you accidentally stumble into possession of a magic wand, and Ah. you, nobody, are going to save the world, maybe. Ah, Um, Maybe. Yeah, we'll see. There's there's already some, like, I'm, I'm like, three hours in, and there's already some suggestion that your plot might be more intertwined with the villain than Uh. than you know, but uh, the, the mechanical gist is that you can use this wand to... Uh, transform into various different forms that can do unique things that have different combat mechanics, different world exploration mechanics in the sort of top-down Zelda-ish adventure. Mm -hmm. Um, Some early examples, you can turn into a rat that can go through small spaces um, and has like some attacks that are based on like you can do little bites that inflict poison buildup, and you can do a big bite that Mm -hmm. heals you health back and it heals more health back if you've poisoned them first, for example. Uh, or you could turn into um, a horse where you get a sort of charging, galloping attack. Mm-hmm. And all of these transformations have quests attached to them that sort of level up and rank up your ability with that transformation and unlock new things you can do. And leveling up one character is sort of how you branch off to get new transformations. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like how the quest, the little quest system works, in that it doesn't give you an overwhelming list of things to do with each transformation straight away, mm-hmm. but it sort of shepherds you towards learning how to play that character well. Um, I enjoy it for the same sort of reasons as I enjoyed Pokemon Legends Arceus. I enjoy that 
gradually giving me little tick boxes to complete that might be things, you know, that are building me towards how I'm supposed to play that kind of character. Like for the rat, um, poison X number of enemies, consume health X number from X number of enemies, then you might get one that's consume health from poisoned enemies and you realize that the two, like doing that teaches you that the two work in conjunction mm. um and every unique transformation has a series of these okay. that sort of prod you towards ways to play them that will sort of teach you their mechanics as you go mm. and i really like that there's also a little overworld quest that will require specific transformations and encourage you to go you can always see, like, one step further up a branch of what transformations you could unlock. Mm -hmm. um, so if you see, oh, there's a nest there, and it seems like I should probably put something in that nest. Well, if I level up the rat, it seems like I can unlock egg as an option. Mm -hmm. And presumably something will happen if I transform into an egg and go in that nest. Mm -hmm. um, there was one where I transformed into a horse, because a horse... I tried to talk to a horse in all of my forms, and it just kept being like... This horse does not care for your your human problems, your rat problems, and I became a horse, and we fell deeply in love. It was Aww. a we had a little love story between two horses. Um, mechanically, it's a lot more engaging of a gameplay system and a combat system than I expected. Mm -hmm. There is a good amount of variety in the combat system between the um, the various forms. Mm -hmm. Basically, the only criticism I have is that the game waits far too long to tell you that there is a shortcut that you can hold down a certain button to quick swap between <laughs> transformations, because for the first hour and a half I was having to pause, um, go a couple of menus left, find a list of um, transformations, scroll to the one I wanted and click to it, uh -huh. which is fine up until... So there's a mechanic that's introduced about ten minutes before you're told you can quick switch, um, where certain enemies will have shields of certain types and you have to damage them with a certain type of damage to break their shield to start doing regular damage. Okay. And I like and this... is that a spectrum or is it specifically you must do horse damage? Um, it's it's not like horse damage, but it would be things like you must do piercing damage or bludgeoning damage. Okay. And like okay. you've you've got sort of your triangle of, of types and you'll know, okay, well I know that this character I have does that type of damage, and maybe I've got two or three that can do that mm -hmm. type of damage, I pick which one to use for the for that bit of fight. Okay. And that works, but there was about ten minutes where I was really annoyed because like the game was at that point actively encouraging me to mid-fight swap characters and hadn't told me there was a quick way to do it. Ugh. Um, Rude. But like, yeah, just play around, I think it's hold down the uh, the, the right bumper you get a quick select wheel, and I just haven't yeah. come across it, but... Um, yeah, there's a, there's, a couple of, there's a couple of design choices in it I'm not certain about. Um, one of them, and I think I get what they're trying to do, but it didn't immediately click for me, is boss dungeons, when you come across those, you can't work on any of your quests for any of your characters while you're in a boss dungeon. Okay. And I, my best guess is that they're trying to go like, while you're outside of the boss dungeon and doing small dungeons, work on improving your character and learning new things they can do. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to a boss dungeon, don't worry about learning anything new right now. Put into practice what you have learned so far. Like, yeah. just do the things you're good at and feel cool for a bit. Mm -hmm. But in practice, the first time I got to one, I was like, okay, cool. Um, Well, what, you know, I've got like another, I've got a half hour of dungeon here. While I'm in here, I'll work on leveling up my turtle that I've just unlocked. Oh no, okay, I just can't do those quests arbitrarily in here. Um, it's just like, eh, not, not, not ideal. But like, that's, I think, the biggest complaint I have about the game so far, which okay. is a pretty good sign. I'm having a fun time playing around with it, and I'm curious to see where it goes. Nice. What about you? What have you played? Oh, uh, I played some Satisfactory. How did that go? It was unsatisfactory. Oh no! Um, so I started, and I was enjoying the sort of very early stuff, and uh, like you, you're on a planet, you're gathering resources, you're working towards building something huge, mm. uh, you're you're getting things going slowly, you're finding um, better sources for materials so that you mm. can um, work towards something slightly better. And then eventually you're sort of going, okay, well, let's start to automate things a little bit. Mm. And I think it took me something like 36 hours 
to uh, automate like the first couple of tiers of things. Yeah. And I already could see that there was like a bunch more things I was going to need, which would mean like setting up either logistics for getting the things that I was already making into other things or setting up separate things to make the base components, to make the big components, to make the things I needed to make for the, like the next tier of stuff. Yeah. And I was like, okay, okay. Um, it feels like it's taking too long for me to, to do things. Like, yeah. Um, Factorio really felt like it, it had some pace to it. Like there, yeah. there was a lot of like working stuff out and the maths around that and trying to work out how to make things slightly better and looking up videos of like how other people went about things and getting ideas from that and moving on. And first of all, it was uh, there was a lot of I've only recently, very recently played Factorio, and I feel like I'm doing a lot of the same stuff. Mm. And the fact that things were taking so incredibly long to do, like, oh, you need a source of this particular material. Well, sure, you can ping your radar t to point you towards it, but you know it might be incredibly dangerous to get there. Yeah. And then you've got to find a way of getting that material back somehow, and like. The, there's videos of people like, I built a huge train system. I was like, I want to build a huge train system. That looks awesome. You, that's going to take a while. It's yeah. going to take a huge amount of time to sort of get to the point where you're just riding a fun train around the countryside and not just being eaten by everything or knocked off ledges and losing all your shit. It, it seems like the kind of game that like very seriously becomes a second job. Oh, I can imagine it. Like, yeah. Like, even like highlights videos of people going, here's my cool factory, are like 40, 50 minutes long, and they're going, yeah, this is like 12 hours of footage. And, yeah. and I'm, I made this one huge project that I needed so that I could make the next thing in the game. And I was like, I don't have time for that. It, it seems like the kind of game that if you have infinite time on your hands, yeah. like, I can see how a few hundred hours in you'd be incredibly satisfied by... Oh what you'd done, but there is a huge c time commitment and learning curve barrier to that. If you're a single great game streamer who is being paid enough to continuously just play games, then maybe you have time for this. Alternatively, if you're, I don't know, maybe a teenager who isn't expected to do a huge amount of other work outside of... Yeah. You know, um, usual school stuff. Then maybe, then maybe you have time for this. But like, I was just like, it looks pretty. I uh, like some of the ideas, but I do not have time to play this game. Yeah. And the looking at some of the bigger stuff, like nuclear power, getting that going. Um, the, like, there's a few people. One of the pe people that I watched a bunch of videos for Factorio has done a bunch of stuff in Satisfactory. Mm. And I was just like, yeah, that looks, uh, yeah, that looks nice. But I, clearly, that this game takes a lot longer than I am willing to willing to put into it. And the people who were streamlining things were like, oh, I've modded it, so I have a jetpack, <laughs> and like I can do all this from above rather than trying to be at like a ground level, trying to n navigate around and put yeah. things down on a grid, and have that actually look right. Because the number of times, the amount of time you spent putting a thing down, lining a thing up, and there's sometimes there's like guidelines showing you like, here is the output of this thing, or this will be in line with that thing if you put it just here. Yeah. And then you put it down, it's like too close or too far away from something, or it's slightly the wrong angle. Uh. Or the join up line that you were looking at wasn't actually the one you thought it was, so oh. it's completely offside. It's like, okay, well, I tear it down, I'll try again. Oh no, it's still in the wrong place, take it out, tear it down. It's like, mm, I don't have time for this shit. That's... Fair. And what about you? What have you played? Uh, we played some board games together. We did. Uh, we played some Pandemic, but in a twist that we haven't tried before. Uh, you, you played the, we played the Bioterrorist I mode. was the Bioterrorist. Yeah, so for any, anyone who's aware of the, the board game Scotland Yard from years ago, it's got that kind of vibe in that everyone else is playing regular Pandemic, trying to cure diseases, run around the board, um, cure stuff up. But you were being a secret person. I was being a secret person using like the infection deck rather than the new normal yeah. player deck to move around or remotely infect cities or do all sorts of other things and um, flying all over the map, sort of hidden. 
but if somebody came through the city I was in, I had to reveal myself, and they had the option to capture me if they still had any actions left. Yeah. But I was captured a few times. Yes. Managed to uh, have a little bit of an escape. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think overall, that like first of all, that mode is a lot harder than I, I it was expecting it to be. Uh, yeah, yeah. And there, there were a couple of times when I was just like, okay, this is going really bad for for them. I'm going to dial way back and just, like, DM for a bit. I mean, part of it was that we didn't... You didn't give us a heads up at the top of exactly what your abilities were and what... We didn't entirely understand what we could learn from the actions you did. Mm. We had an incomplete picture of this happened on the board, that means blank. Mm. And part of it is a learning curve of, like, and this is this is nothing to do with you, it's just a, a learning curve of, is it worth our time to be going after you and trying to capture you and mm-hmm. keeping you locked down, or is that a poor use of our resources mm. time-wise? Um, like, we clearly had to be playing it a different kind of way because of the bioterrorist, and I didn't entirely get my head around how we needed to play to counter mm. that. Yeah, um, I mean, it was a first time. We were all yeah. learning a thing. Um, and it's also sort of hard to get out of that typical rhythm, for, especially if you've played Pandemic a few times, to going, yes, I take my four actions, uh, and I, I usually plan those out right from the beginning, and then just go dup 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 at the end once yeah. just to, to carry out those actions, rather than having to be aware that hey, at some point m- in the middle of that, you might just go, oh, I've revealed the bio terrorist, yes, out of nowhere, and now I have to decide: do I continue with my move as planned, or do I capture the bio terrorist and, and yeah. lose a move? Um, then there's the whole aspect of uh, the fact that like so it's it's you do your four moves, you draw your two cards you infect, and then rather than moving straight onto the next player, as is traditional, the bioterrorist will take two actions and a drive or ferry action for free. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a lot going on and a lot to keep track of, and it, it really messes with your general rhythm for the game. Yeah, it's interesting and I want to play it again. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I, I think... I think it's one that, like, if if we were doing the teach again, I would recommend explaining all of the bioterrorists. Mm-hmm. Like, at, at the very least, if this happens on the board, you can glean that either this or this is going on. These mm-hmm. are the things that the bioterrorist can do, and the actions that you might take that might lead, like, give them the ability to do that, so mm-hmm. you understand, like, how to play with them. Yes. I'll be I'll be fair. I actually started that game only re- having read about half of my actions. That's entirely fair. It I I don't blame you, <laughs> but also I think it put us at a yes. somewhat of a disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah, but yeah, that mode is definitely hard. I mean, I um, think it's designed to be. Yeah, yeah, but um but I think it's it's a nice way for uh, people who know the game really well and are occasionally guilty of quarterbacking to like take that role on and I, I can do something a bit different. I could definitely see us playing like a four against one with three against it's... one. It doesn't recommend for four against Okay. One. Well then like a yeah, a three against one against our experienced friend who might mm-hmm. quarterback and pop them as a bioterrorist. I could That's see me. that being fun. Oh yeah, yeah. And and like you said, it it really does have that vibe of Scotland Yard and I suppose it's it's a hidden role game, so yeah. that's just kinda how it goes. But yeah, yeah. it was Nice to try something a bit different. What about you? Um, well, we played some more board games together. We did? Uh, we played some Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Flashpoint Fire Rescue. We had a very close game of that. We did. Um, we, 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 like, we'd finally got the, the sort of fire mostly under control. Yeah. We'd had a couple of like really big outbreaks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, things spiraled a bit. It's, it's the... <sighs> So we've talked about this game before. You're cooperatively putting out a fire in a house. Um, and we're playing with a couple of new people. And always when you play with new people, there's the, like, you got to leave them to work out what's worth prioritising and not so that you don't mm-hmm. quarterback the first teach. And mm-hmm. we were very close to getting the minimum number of people out. We had the final person and were, like, heading for the door and just one explosion too many. Yeah. And, like... I it think was there just are luck of the dice, really. Yeah, and I think there are things we could have done differently, but also we had a good close first game, and I, 
I always like when a first a, a first teach of a board game goes like that, mm-hmm. where it's skin of your teeth, just one side or the other of, yeah, yeah. of scraping through. You either just make it or just fail. It. I feel like it gives that impression of hey, come back and play this again. Yeah, I th- I think a lot of like games like that, especially cooperative games, mm. where you just end up losing that first game. I I. In my experience, the, those people who have had those games with me have been like, I want to play again. I want, yeah. I, I, I want another go. I'm gonna definitely going to do it this time. Like, I was so close. Exactly. And, and that's always nice t- to see with, like, a new game, because I realise that can be intimidating for a lot of people. Yeah. What? But, um, yeah, that was, that was a nice one, and yeah. we've not played Flashpoint in so long. Yeah, it's fun. I, it was nice to, to, to get it out again. We played on family mode, but um, <laughs> given given how long it's been since we played, it was yeah. it was nice to have a bit of a refresher. Uh, what about you? What are you playing? Oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. I played some Kingdoms Two Crowns. Ooh. I think I talked about King uh, Kingdoms something else some time ago hmm. you are like a 2d pixel art um king on a horse yes. and you just ride left and right and interact with things and try and uh, like make a better kingdom and advance to the next area yeah and um no yeah, it's 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 a fun little experience the only thing that sort of deadened it for me was i forgot to pause it walked away to make dinner and when i came back Winter had set in, nothing would grow, there was no way of getting any money, I couldn't advance the game at all. Oh. And, uh, like, it had basically completely locked me out. I was like, err. Yeah. And it's one of those, do I feel, do I care enough to replay to try again? Well, the other thing is, it auto saves, like, at the beginning of yeah. every day, so, like, there was no turning back. But, um, yeah, and there seems to be, like, a couple of different versions of the, of the Kingdom yeah. games. There's a. Uh, Shogun Gun, uh, Shogun, Shogun, Shogun Gun, no, Shogun game that like um so it's like feudal feudal Japan rather than yeah um middle aged uh middle aged middle ages <laughs> middle We're ages sleepy this middle week. ages Europe yes <laughs> and my face doesn't work because nah, nah. too many work uh yeah so that was kingdoms two crowns you. If if anyone picked up the uh, Ukraine bundle recently, they're probably going to go like, "Hang on, I know which what's in this list of games." <laughs> uh, what about you? The only other thing I really played was uh, Gloomhaven: Jewels of the Lion. We played some more of that. Oh. Um, I continue to very much enjoy that game. Um, you 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 got us some fancy little things to put all our cards and yeah, statues nice and dashboards because yeah. that game can sprawl a bit once you've uh, got a bit of stuff. And this has definitely helped mitigate the sprawl. It is very business as usual. The session we did, we did a little side quest, got a cool upgrade item, went and did a main quest. Plot progressed. Plot progressed. We um, ticked things off. We put stickers on. I had a very good round in terms of getting like three perk ticks in a single uh, yeah. uh, map. It that was, was a, great. like a whole level up. Um, yeah. Oh. Two of you managed to uh, hit level l- hit level seven. seven? I think, yeah. yeah. So we're a little ahead of you. You're on six still, but I'm still on six. I'm yeah. like thirty XP away from. Yeah. Not not a huge gulf, but yeah. there's a little bit. Yeah, I'm I'm ready. Ready for more. Ready for more and I, I continue to be having a great time. Yeah, it's 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 really nice and I think this this was the first session where we'd sort of brought up the concept of what happens when we finish this. Like to the game itself. Yeah. Because like, I don't know if I would necessarily play Jaws of the Lion again. Agreed. Um so as as possible as it is to insert those characters into a game of Gloomhaven or Frosthaven. I I like the thought of this being the end of their story yeah. and us moving moving forward. Like, I might pop the hatchet out and um, yeah. play like a, a session with, um, with them yeah. in, in Frosthaven when that arrives. But yeah, I'm, I think I'm probably ready to pass that on to, to some new owners once, yeah. uh, once that time comes. Yeah. Uh, what else? Do you play anything else? Um, not really. It's it's been a lot of shiny hunting in Pokemon soft resetting because I've been a, I've had very little brain. One day that Reggie Lecky will be yours. One day that shiny Reggie Lecky will be mine. One day that shiny Mew from Pokemon Go will be mine. Fuck that quest to get the shiny Mew. It is fucking grindy as hell. Mm-hmm. I will at some point write a separate thing just about how fucking like. 
obtuse and grindy and designed to be manipulative that fucking quest is. Mm. Uh, Rude. That's for another day. Oh, yes. Well, what about you? Have you got any other games to talk about? Oh, yes. I'm just going to rattle through a, a quick list of a bunch of stuff I've played. Uh, so, Post Void, which is a, a, an eye-meltingly a neon, swirly, uh, classic 3D-style run-and-gun shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, with, like, this weird life mechanic where you have to shoot things to get more life. But uh, like life feels like it's constantly ticking down, and like you oh, you drop okay. to a level where you can only take one hit initially, and it's like sort of get your rhythm going and and moving more. But yeah. it is painful to look at, and you really need some serious twitch skills to uh, to get on with it. Played it for about ten minutes, decided it wasn't for me, moved on. I uh, played Pornbarian, mm -hmm. uh, which is a um, Sort of a roguelike dungeon crawling game where you are, you have a deck of cards that are based on chess pieces. Ooh. Uh, the chess pieces can move around the board, and rather than fighting against evil chess pieces, you have um, just like monsters. Yeah. And some of those monsters will have like very specific rules about how they work, like they will always avoid the first attack mm. if they can. Um, so you maybe want to try and line them up against a wall. And then attack them so that they can't uh -huh. run in the opposite direction. Or maybe you find a way of, like, you move yourself into one position to attack that one particular creature, which uh, obviously moves it out of the way and into safety, but you also, maybe you've got a powered up, like, knight or something that does, like, a cross-shaped attack mm. when, when it lands on something, so it will hit the thing next to it. Um, some things can't be attacked attacked if you start your move uh, orthogonally or diagonally adjacent to it. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of working out your positioning and how you can get into the right place to, to attack. That sounds pretty um, interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun little puzzly type dungeon crawl game and very replayable. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I played some Go Home Dinosaurs. <gasps> it's a uh, tower defense game where you are trying to protect your grill from the dinosaurs who want to eat your steaks. <gasps> and eventually, oh. if I if I manage to get enough points, I can go into the shop and replace the steaks with carrots. <gasps> there is a veggie mode, but you have to earn it. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's kind of charming. Looks a bit like a mobile game. Mm. It was in the thing, so I played it. And <laughs> um, that got me into an entirely different tower defense game called Rogue Tower, which wasn't in that collection. But I've seen a lot of people talking about it recently, and it seems okay. to have massively divided its audience. Okay. Because the Steam reviews are mostly positive. <laughs> There's a lot of people who are just like, oh, I don't like the fact that you can't do this, that, or the other particular thing that I like from other tower defense games. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it's, um, there is a degree of randomness. Mm. So basically, at, you will do a, uh, like a, you'll click expand along the the um the route leading to your tower. Yeah. And when you do that, a number of things will come running down the track. If you take uh. them out, you will have more chance to expand things. Um sometimes there will be forks in the road, so you might start finding things that are coming from two different directions so you could expand in different ways. Okay. And maybe you can sort of run your um run run that path parallel to something you've already made so that the same defences are, are being activated yeah. twice. Um, and therefore levelling up and getting stronger more quickly. Yeah. So that you're not ending up going, the things that are very close to my base haven't had any experience for a while and are consequently potentially not going to be able to save me at all if things get a bit hectic later on. Yeah. Um, there's some... Fun little power ups, and it has like a, a another roguelike system where yeah. you get experience for how well you do in a run, and that will earn you the opportunity to unlock cards, which could get you um, new towers, uh, power ups for those towers, or even things like um, like permanent perks, like starting a, a run with more money, mm. or um, certain towers just being stronger by default. Nice. And um, yeah, it, it's like forty five levels. Per um, 
per set, so you can run a single lane, as in there is only one uh, route out of your main town, uh, which you're trying to defend, to a uh, dual lane, so you're protecting yeah. two, to three-way. Um, and it's just different ways Survive of... Survive the chaos. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a fun little tower defense game. It's like just over a tenner, mm. and it's available on Steam. I have enjoyed it so far. Nice. Uh, well, that's everything I've played. Well, that's everything I've played. Well, then. <gasps> Time for this. Have you been pulling all-nighters on a creative writing project? Uh-huh. Is your brain feeling wrung out? Uh-huh. Like there's nothing left in the tank? Uh-huh. Well, don't panic. Instead, fill her up with brain juice. You'll be feeling back on top of things, flowing with creative energy in no time. Mm. Brain juice. Ask a pharmacist how you can get the juiciest lobes today. Mmm, juicy lobes. Picture the scene. You need to tighten a screw. Or, or, or not. But, uh-oh. It's in a hard-to-reach spot. You don't have a screwdriver that they can get in there. And even if you did, you couldn't turn that sucker. Hi there. We're Weasel Canics. And if you need someone who can get in an awkward spot and to tighten a screw or not, we've got just a specially trained weasel mechanic for your oddly specific needs. Weasel Canics. We get right in there. Oh, adorable. <laughs> Squeak. <laughs> So, <gasps> what have you put in your eyes? Uh, I watched a fair bit. I watched a, yeah. I watched a bunch of films while while travelling. Um, I watched a CGI animated film called Ron's Gone Wrong. I remember hearing about that. It's like the what if the Eva from Wally type robot assistant friend was a wish version? Kind of. Um, so near future. Um, Apple slash Facebook has made a robot that's going to be your best friend and is also a social media platform okay. of a robot. And all the kids want one. Y you're not cool if you don't have one. Mm -hmm. Kids won't be your friend if you don't have one. Excellent social um, engineering there platform. Exactly. Uh. And uh, our titular, our main character, um, desperately wants one and his family's like, okay... And they get him one that's fallen off the back of a truck somewhere okay. and it's a little bit broken and not quite working right. Okay. It won't connect to the social network. It can't do any of the network functionality. Um, doesn't know how to be a friend. It hasn't had any of the system updates that it's supposed to have. Okay. Um, but it's this kind of growing friendship and like there's this little story of like not judging at first sight and, and you know, fr friendship despite um, not being what you expected. Hmm. And then the film kind of... The film has, like, a few distinct things it tries to be in succession. Right. So it's that. And then it turns out that the broken robot doesn't have any of the safety restrictions on it that it's meant to have because it doesn't right. have the day one update. Which means it can do things like beat up um, the school bullies because okay. they're not supposed to be able to hurt humans. Right. And footage starts leaking of this robot that can hurt humans and suddenly the corporations involved and they're trying to track them down oh, no. um and then it goes it goes real hard on being like an anti-capitalist anti-social media Yay. thing where it like fully leans into its um it's oh what was the the apple stick the mix of steve jobs and mark zuckerberg 100 mm. percent goes like Oh yeah, no. I'm going to use all of the microphones and cameras built into these things that every child in the country has to do surveillance. I am gonna like 100% invasion of privacy to get what I want because you click through the terms of service without reading them. Yeah, it yeah. It, it it goes a lot. It for a while becomes a film about all of the other robots getting all of their safety limits removed and stuff. It's this film. I, I felt like at multiple different points it, it, it was separate films that were happening. <laughs> like four different projects got sort of I, mushed together. Somehow! And like, it, it works, but it is it is an enjoyable kids' film that is um, chaotic and just like, when you think you've got to be on where it's going, it just takes a, a hard 90 degree <laughs> turn. It's like, we're going this way now. Nice. Um, it was fun, if a little, all over the place. Ron's gone wrong. Three movies in a trench coat. It's, it's, it's the kind of thing that I had a good time sleepily half-watching while travelling and not <laughs> wanting... Being like, if I fall asleep, I'm not going to be too upset that I missed some of this. Mm -hmm. It's great for that. Yeah. 
Uh, what about you? Uh, we watched Knives Out. We did. Um, that was surprising. Yeah. I have heard lots of people praise Knives Out, and I knew nothing about why. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that I managed to not be spoiled on any part of that plot, because it is a, a good yeah. little murder mystery. Yeah, yeah. It is... I, I think all I would want to say about it is, it is a murder mystery that multiple times managed to not be what I expected. Mm -hmm. And it was very well acted, and... Yeah... It is it is a it is a masterwork of setup and payoff and mm -hmm. interplay of varying motives. Yeah, and it's it's one of those movies that you can sort of sit there on the couch and be like, I think this is what's happening, I think this is what's happening, and Yeah. Then like five minutes late of getting all new information and going, Oh, but what if it was this? Yeah. Um go into it knowing as little as possible, it is a very good film. Yeah. And I'm I'm I'm... And apparently they're making two more. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm i very glad I, I went in basically knowing nothing. Oh, absolutely. And had a great time watching. Yeah. And, and I think maybe if you have ADHD like I have, if you were spoiled at the time it came out, perhaps you've already forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was that was nice. That was good. Were you watching anything else? Uh, well, we watched another film together. Mm. We, we've rewatched Us. Yeah, the... first time we saw it since we went to the cinema. Yes, um, that film is superb. Oh, yes. There is definitely a lot to be picked up by rewatching and sort of knowing where it's oh, going. Yeah. Um, there is um, a fight scene set to some music near the end of that <laughs> film. That is one of the greatest pieces of film put to put to screen. It's beautifully choreographed. It's, it's... beautifully acted. Uh, oh. The musical choice was perfect. the musical choice is amazing, and I that wish that whole film is full of amazing musical choices. Yeah, that that film feels like Jordan Peele going. I have earned enough credibility that I can get custom versions of songs made that will only exist in my movie and on my personal computer. Oh, yeah, because that version is not on the fucking soundtrack CD. Yeah. Oh. I I very much enjoyed rewatching knowing where it was going and mm -hmm. watching for the because there was a lot of watching it going oh is this happening because blank mm -hmm. and there I'm, I'm glad I gave it some time before the rewatch oh, yes. it 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 sure merited a second viewing oh absolutely it, <sighs> and and I look forward to giving it another watch uh, in a couple of years time because it's a damn good movie yeah I continue to very much have infinite faith in whatever Jordan Peele does. I'm yep. like, you you are to be trusted. We need to watch that Twilight Zone, the Jordan yes. Peele Twilight Zone. I am also very ready for whatever this new movie is Nope. Called. Nope. That was yeah. yeah. There was another teaser for it, and again, I learned absolutely nothing. And I don't care, and I just want to see it. <laughs> the, the, the running thread and the, the closest to a theme I can get so far is... Um, Bad ominous things happening, and the black people present going, "Oh yeah, no, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna fucking stick around and see what this is." We're, no, thank you. <laughs> just it, leave it to to white people it, to do t typical horror movie it, stuff. Of oh yeah, we'll just we'll just pop outside and see what's yeah, happening. Yeah. Obviously, Jordan Peele. I I expect that whatever the surface vibes I'm picking up are going to be completely thrown oh, out probably. the window. But right now, the only thing I have to go on seems to be the trope from horror. Of of the black character being the one that goes, yeah, no, you're all fucking stupid for staying in the fucking haunted house. Okay, I'm I'm gonna get out. You you have a fun time getting murdered. Yep. You uh, you go and check. You, you yeah. You give Jason back his fucking machete. <laughs> he just wanted his machete. Yeah, I I I don't want to know what it is until I see it, and I'm excited to see it. Hundred percent, I'm very excited. Uh, what about you? What have you seen? Oh well, let's see. I. <laughs> Um, I was made aware that I had missed a bunch of Red Dwarf. Okay. But in the same way that I don't really care... F I, I haven't really given a fuck about Red Dwarf since, like, season seven, uh, since, like, uh, series five. <laughs> yeah. I kept watching through, like, series six, seven, and eight in the hope that it would ever, you know, capture any of that series four, four five uh, energy ever again. And it never did. Yeah. So, like... Over the years, I've just gone, I've got time. I'll sit and watch another series of that. And then been like, eh, eh. that happened. I wasted a portion of my life over this. Mm. Um, so yeah, I watched season 12 and I watched the, the Promised Land Red Dwarf movie. How were they? 
It's fine. More red dwarf, but not the best red dwarf. Just <laughs> it was distracting. I went, oh, it's that thing. That it, it, that's a reference to the first episode. Huh. Yeah. And and well, well that's the, that it, was fine. Yeah. Sometimes the thing just keeps treading water and is technically more of the thing that came before. Technically. And I, and I guess that's just what Dave does. Yeah. Puts British TV shows on life support. <laughs> um, yeah. Probably long after they should have died. Uh, yeah. It's... it's. Uh, I'm not going to recommend it. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. We took... To... Like, I'm sure there are probably other trans references in um, other series, because mm. I haven't watched old, old episodes. But there is a reference to um, the cat changing sex at some point. Mm -hmm. Which I was like, oh, oh god, it. Oh god, here we go. And it basically turned into. Lister was having an yet another crisis. Yeah. Um, Crichton is convinced the, the best thing he can do to get over the fact that he is the last human being alive is to have a child and mm. suggest that if the cat was a woman. Then, then maybe they could have kids together. Uh huh. And then they just have an argument about who would be the hotter woman. Uh huh. And that happened. It was less offensive than I had momentarily expected. Yeah. But also, we're like, hmm, you kind of went there, didn't you? Mm. But, uh, so there was that. Uh, what about you? Watching anything else? Well, you watched the Red Dwarf thing called The Promised Land. Yes. I watched a series of anime I'd been meaning to get around to called Ooh. The Promised Neverland. Is this a Peter Pan reference? It, um, only in that. I mean, I'm going to talk about the basic premise of the first episode, and I think the the reference is it's about a bunch of children that that never grow up but for a very different reason. Mm -hmm. um, it is set in what appears to be initially a modern day setting in a orphanage. Mm -hmm. um, all of the children are under age 12. Um, they've got one sort of parental figure who looks after them. They have a very good life. Mm -hmm. um, the children always get adopted at the very latest when they turn 12. Okay. And there are areas uh, surrounding where they live that they are not to go. They are not to stray from the orphanage. Mm -hmm. And um, the first episode does a lot of setting up, like, the idyllic nature of this setting. Mm -hmm. To then have one child get adopted, and she's, through the whole first episode, had this stuffed toy that she goes everywhere with. And it's been left behind. It hasn't, mm. it hasn't been taken with her to where, where she's being adopted. Um, and, like... Two of the kids go, hey, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go rush off. I know we're not supposed to go to the gate at the exit, but, like, she can't leave without this. And they happen to discover the horrible truth that this is a near-future world where monsters exist, and these children are being raised in the orphanage to have their brains fed to monsters. <laughs> um, very specifically, like trying to make them, like, teach them as much as possible and, like, get them to par prime perfect brain point. Mm -hmm. Like, they they are being used as a human farm. Mm -hmm. um, and the rest of the series, or at least the first season, there's a second season which I haven't watched yet, but the first mm -hmm. season is very much about these two 12-year-olds who've suddenly realised, oh god, all of these... Oh, they're not quite 12, they're 11, they're, they're coming up on 12. Mm. And they've realised... All of these younger children here at the orphanage are being basically grown to be turned into, into food for monsters. Mm. We need to come up with an escape plan without this mother figure working out what we're doing. And our escape plan has to somehow account for the fact that there are like 30, 40 children here. All of whom, like, some of them are as young as, like, infants that will not be able to escape on their own unassisted. Mm. Um, how do we train up a bunch of, like, three, four, five, six-year-olds to be able to make this escape mission without them p panicking, without worrying them, but giving them the tools they're going to need to escape and to cope once we get outside? Yeah. And it becomes this really interesting, like, back and forth, um, like... It reminded me so much of the better parts of Death Note, where you had that sort of knowing interplay between Light and L, 
going, I know that you know, and you know that I know, but we can't prove that the other side knows X, Y, or Z, and trying to, like, counter-move against each mm. other. But with the added thing of, this is a bunch of children that have very limited resources and very limited ability to not be watched all the time. Mm. And it's a fascinating first season. Um, it uses a little bit of horror stuff very occasionally, but it's like, it's used very sparingly to set the tone and to set the stakes, but not gratuitously held on. Like, a good example, the first episode is one of the few episodes that has anything visually violent, mm. and it is child, blood, head cut open, no brain, and it's just for a second, and it's just enough to go, that's a really fucking traumatic thing for that 11-year-old to have seen, and to now have to not let the parents around recognise that you are traumatised by it and try and keep that under wraps mm. until you can work out what to do about it. While like, mobilising an army. Or trying to mobilise a child army. And, like, there are certain moments where it gets really tense and where, like, horrible things happen, but they're always very quick, they're never lingered on, and they are always for very, like, we're going to do this for just a second just to pivot the plot and mm. to set it in a new direction. And the first season is... The gore is used to punctuate rather than yeah, as, as the whole point. It's used very sparingly, and it is very effectively used. Mm -hmm. It's... It's used just to set the stakes of this is a very intense thing for a child to have to go through. And, like, a big thing early on is, you know, of the two children that see this, one of them is very, like, we could just escape. We could make a plan now and we could get out mm. and be okay. And if we try and get everyone else out, there is every chance that we won't get out and neither will they. And trying to, you know have this balance of how do you find the confidence to keep going no we will find a way to get everyone out when the stakes are as viscerally high as they are <laughs> um and it's it's so good i haven't watched the second season yet i know people have mixed feelings on the second season i don't know specifics i haven't read anything up front but mm -hmm. the first season is probably the most solidly fantastic first season of an anime I've seen in a long time. Mm. Um, I would very highly recommend that first season. Um, if it sounds interesting to you, go give it a go. Don't hear anything else about it. Go check it out. It's mm. it's so tense. It, it's, it's, it's very up there with severance in the sort of like, oh, I just need to watch another episode mm -hmm. vibe. Like, I... I Every episode, I say, like, "Oh God, I need, I need, I need to know where you're going. I can't, I can't stop now." Well, since we've mentioned the good thriller, yeah, should we talk about Severance? Yeah, season we've had the final episode now. Yeah, season one of Severance is finished, and oh, um, boy, that went some places. Um, obviously, we're not going to talk about them, but no, that is, it's well shot. It's very tense. It, it keeps the drama going all the way through. Ben Stiller has, with this, cemented himself in my, in my mind as, like, up there with Jordan Peele in terms of I will trust you when you make weird... If you make thriller content, I'll, ch I'll, I'll check out whatever you do after this, oh. Ben Stiller. Yeah, I mean, I will certainly check out whatever he does, but I'm not going to give him jo Jordan Peele stats just yet. Nah, he's he's going to do a second, he's gonna do a second a good of one first, right, but, like, yeah. he... he this feels up there in terms of, oh, you, you fucking nailed your landing and uh, really kicking it with this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that, season, that season one finale was oh, yes. one of the best finales of a season of TV I've oh, yeah. seen in a long time. And, um, and like a cliffhanger ending that I could... I wouldn't say I could see it go. I mean, I could see that it was going to end up as a yeah. cliffhanger because there was just not enough runtime yeah. left. But, like, but I was like... If... Here's the, here's the thing I think they did really well, is if this had not had a second season greenlit, mm. this would have been a really good stopping point, where you could have gone, there's, like, I can imagine where this goes, and that's like a, that, that could have been a really, like, I could have been happy with it ending there. Yeah, that could, that, even so, that could, yeah. that would, but, you know, spawn just, like, yeah. untold fan fiction. Exactly, but the fact that it is getting a second season, I'm like, oh, hell yes, please, show me those things. Show me, I'm ready. <gasps> It did such a good job of taking things that have been seeded all season and having them all pay off mm -hmm. one after another in rapid succession in a way that didn't feel forced, mm -hmm. 
um, but that just felt like the natural conclusion of all the dominoes that had been placed together. It's like, yes, of course, that one knocks over that one, knocks over that one. Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm still having, like, little surprises. Yeah. And and there being, you know, more to it. And I, I think we spent a lot of the time sat and they go, I, like, I think the end of the eighth episode, we was, there was a lot of, sort of back and forth between us, like, boy, if this happens, oh, God, this yeah. is going to happen. I'm, this is going to but yeah, but but what if this? What if this? And then like episode nine happened, and like some of our theories yeah. happened, and some of them didn't. And... and like the ones that we'd we'd guessed in advance would happen and happened, still felt super satisfying. Oh yeah, because the way it was yes. done was just like ah, the, not now. Yeah, the <laughs> the expertise with which those predictable things were perfectly deployed to feel satisfying even though you kind of knew they would happen uh, like or you you it, it wasn't less a case of knowing that it was going to happen and more a case of oh my god what if yeah. this it, thing happens they were very like this could happen or it could not happen and both would be very dramatic ways to go and they're going to address it some way or another and then like every time x and y character interact <laughs> yeah. you were just like is it going to happen are they are they going to say something yeah ah! yeah particularly um that th there was a whole thing with some lots of people having their phone out around one character and like mentioning things they were about to pull up on their phone and it's like oh is this going to be the one? oh no oh no oh no oh oh oh, oh, oh no <laughs> Yeah, mm, it was mm. it was super. Superb, yeah. yeah, go watch Severance. Mm -hmm. It's so good. That was an good show. Oh. I enjoyed that. More of that, please. Yeah, my body is ready. Exactly. Uh, we've been watching some more uh, Picard season two. We have. Yeah. yeah. Think things are happening. Yeah. I have enjoyed some of the references to previous Star Treks they have made. Indeed. Um, I am loving the uh, the Borg Queen, whoever yeah. the new actress is for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think she's pulled it off really well. I, I feel like this season has taken a little time to, to sort of get where it's going. Yeah, I mean, we did have sort of two false starts on the, on the series. I, I feel like it maybe didn't need to spend as long as it did with the, the team has split up and it's going to take them a while to get back together, and some of the plot threads during that time didn't really go anywhere. I mean, they might still go places. Yeah, they, they might. That might have just been more set up. But, like, we've already started theorising around what the, the wider arcs have been. Yeah. We've uh, had... We had whatever the hell the last episode were, was where we went from, oh my god, are they really doing this, to, okay, that wasn't quite what it seemed at the beginning yeah. or even halfway through for for a second it seemed like they were going to do something that sure would have been a fucking thing for patrick stewart to be involved in yes um it seemed very much like it was going somewhere yeah um <laughs> and it went very close to that um i was just like yeah that was that was quite a watch yeah i'm ready for yet more it's it, it's it's gotten it's gotten itself moving and it's getting real interesting. Oh hell yeah, it's jogging along nicely. Yeah. Um, um, what about you? Watch anything else? Ah, uh, well, we watched some Adventure Time. We did together because we've been meaning to watch Adventure Time together as yeah, a couple. We for... started briefly a, a long time ago. Yeah, do we were wanna... very busy bunnies. Yeah, do we want to give the context for that? The the idea was that I had watched it all the way through as it was then because they had yeah. just done the season 10 finale, which is like the end of the show. Yeah. And none of this sort of stuff of we're reviving it with like a new crew and stuff and it's it's going to go ahead um, in a way that feels really weird given yeah. the way the series ends. Um, and I and you'd never seen it before, I'd or beyond a, a couple yeah. of like I'd seen isolated episodes. bits of it, but I'd never like watched it all the way through. So we came up for an idea for a podcast, and yeah. we recorded three episodes. Yes, <laughs> and then life happened in the way that it does. Yes, and maybe we will revisit that idea yeah. in some shape or form at some point. But we never got round to properly watching through Adventure Time because we didn't feel like we could unless we were in work mode. Yes, and. Sometimes that just stops you from doing a thing that you just kind of want to do for fun. Mm -hmm. So we've gone, you know what, maybe we just watch Adventure Time and that's just a fun thing we do. Yeah, I mean, it certainly helped that we were going from 
okay, here is five episodes of Adventure Time. That's about 50 minutes. Yeah. And then, like, watching it through, watching it through again and making notes. Yes. Pausing and making notes and that being like, okay, we've taken a 50-minute thing for fun and turned it into a three-hour thing plus however long it takes to record. <laughs> yes. Like, we still have all the notes for that show. In yeah. Fact, we still have the recordings for yeah. the three episodes yeah. we did. But Indeed, but... Yeah. We just wanted a fun thing to watch for fun, and I'm very much enjoying it. We've oh, watched, yeah. like, the first 25 episodes. It's, um... Yep. I'm very much enjoying it. I know enough about the thing to be able to occasionally see stuff and go, oh, I know what that... I kind of know what that's about. Yeah, well, sort we, of. we sort of just about caught the beginning of an episode... Um, as we were going to bed the other night. Oh, with the big beardy. Like, Billy! Yes, beardy guy who I've seen in some stuff. I am vaguely aware of him. You're like, I've seen Billy in a thing. I have some conceptual reference of you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we will probably talk about that in more depth in the future, but we've, we've, we're we watching it now. Yeah. Uh, you seen anything else? Uh, we watched... We went out, like, three episodes deep into Moon Knight. Yeah. I am... Th- fascinated about that show and I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm in the tier list of Marvel shows that we've had recently, I definitely put it above The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I... it comes much higher than that. So, the the problem is is that we're three episodes in and there's been a lot of like interesting mystique setup, but not enough like payoff and sense of direction of like where we're heading plus it's one of those shows that i mean if 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 this is like anything like any of the others it's going to be what nine ten episodes long i believe this one's a really short one i think it might just be seven i think i saw so we're three episodes in and i feel like we've barely started to uncover yeah it's about we've had like one episode that was set up that only barely got to the hook a second episode that was very oh oh the plot is happening oh no is it happening is it happening and a third episode that sort of got into the meat of it a little it i've been enjoying watching it but how much i will be positive about these first three episodes will really depend on what they manage to do with the rest of the season mm-hmm. because I feel like next episode is like episode four is going to be very make or break for me in terms of does it feel like it feels like the last chance they've really got to hone in on this yeah. is the plan. Like I feel like right from the beginning they've done a decent job of setting up their antagonists. Yeah, we know their antagonists' goals. We know what that is, but it has taken us so long to cement even. A thir- two thirds of the aspects of our protagonist. <sighs> yeah. That um, the it 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 feels a little bit directionless at times. Yeah. I it I I get wanting some mystery, but I oh, we're yeah. three episodes in and we've still got half of the main protagonist refusing to answer even basic questions about what's going on, even at the point where like. Hey, it's very clear that at this point, just fucking explain it and the two of you will get on so much better. Mm. And it feels like secrets being kept for the sake of keeping them. Yeah. And it's causing... It's another <sighs> one of those, if the people would just talk to each other. Yeah, it's just unnecessary conflict. And I, like... Because, like, that conflict, that doesn't need to exist. The the mystery conflict doesn't need to exist. Because at its core, what I think would be really interesting and I really hope next episode gets us to is... The two of you have the same ultimate goal you're working towards, but you both have different moralities about how to achieve that, and maybe you're going to fight back and forth about how to do it, but ultimately you see that you you can look at the other of you and go, we are working towards the same thing, and sometimes you're needed and sometimes I'm needed. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the sooner we can get to that, the sooner I can get invested in the main character. Yes, it's not been enough to name drop uh, things from uh, Egyptian mythology and from other Marvel properties yeah. to really carry this show. Like, I feel like I have a better sense of the villain than I do the main character. Absolutely. I feel like I have a better sense of the weird god that is puppeting the main character than I do of the main character. 
I at least understand what their motivations are and their moral like alignment and what their whole deal is. I feel yeah, like but, I have... uh, at the end of season three, at the end of episode three, I don't even know what that's going to mean going forward. <sighs> um, I think overall the thing that keeps coming back to my mind with this show is it's a fine distraction for forty minutes a week or whatever, <laughs> but. A, I'm glad I'm not playing for Disney Plus for it, <laughs> and and B, it weirdly gives me vibes of a DC show. It feels way more like a DC show than a Mar any of the Marvel stuff that we've this, watched. This is one of those shows where I wish the whole season had just dropped at once. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I'd probably be more forgiving if I could just binge through and go, okay, I'll just keep watching until it clicks. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I'm enjoying watching it. I'm just... It's it, fine. It's feeling a little directionless. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's a fine distraction. <sighs> and and the fact that that's the best thing I could really say about it so far... I, I uh, think I feel a bit more positively than you, but oh, yeah. I still have... It It's it's wearing thin on where I'm probably going to... Like, soon I will be at the same point yeah. as you if it doesn't get itself together. I'm I'm ready for... Shows that I have more interest in. I'm yeah. ready for She-Hulk. I'm ready for Ms. Marvel. I'm really struggling to give a fuck about this one. Uh, what about you? Have you watched anything else? Uh, the main other thing I've watched is I watched a lengthy YouTube video called I re-edited all of Naruto for my girlfriend by a YouTuber called Ocean... Ocean is? Ocean IZ. Um... And then I started watching said re-edit of mm -hmm. Naruto. So, like... I Naruto was one of the first anime I got into watching, and I have a real love for Naruto, despite the fact that it is kind of terrible. <laughs> um, it is it is a show that, at its best moments, is superb, but has real issues with um, rampant filler arcs that go nowhere and flashbacks uh, that you know, will sometimes re resurface up to 20 times for the same clip. Mm. Um, it really just, like, it It doesn't get to the point. Um, like, if you watch something like Full Metal Alchemist or something like that, you can go, yeah, each episode feels like it's progressing. Naruto doesn't have that. Mm. Um, largely, it's a result of the fact that it was they were trying to make the anime at the same time that the manga was releasing, and they kept catching up with the manga and then needing to just fill time and drag their heels and slow themselves down until there was more manga to adapt. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, there's some humour in it that hasn't aged well and some bits of it that just, just haven't aged well since, like, the early 2000s. And this re-edit, basically the, the person making it, their, their approach was, can I make Naruto a well-paced... It, it, like watchably watchable modern show mm -hmm. that maybe is a little less jumping all over the place with its plot that gets rid of some of the nonsense um the some of the stuff that hasn't aged well that better positions some of the uh the is a bit more sort of pick and choose about which uh side content to have in for character flavoring and which stuff to cut because like there have been fan edits of Naruto before, but they're usually very, very brutal. Anything that isn't strictly a hundred percent necessary to the main plot gets cut, and that causes you to miss some of the like building of relationships so that things feel like they matter later. Mm. And basically trying to make like, hey, can I just like cut a decent chunk out of this so it feels like a much better balanced anime? Mm. And he ended up taking about half of the show out. <laughs> Um, but, like, uh, having started watching it, he's done a really good job. He's broken it up into, like, hour-long episodes mm -hmm. where it's, like, he'll take the episodes that are a certain narrative arc mm -hmm. and condense them down into, like, this narrative arc is now a one-hour anime film. Um, he's done a good job of hiding edits by, like, using the original soundtrack to sort of soundtrack over, over edits, um... And it's really given me the the desire to go back and rewatch Naruto because I really enjoyed it back in the day, but I do not have it in me to watch like seven hundred episodes of a thing 
Mm. I, I don't have it in me to rewatch Naruto. This is the anime equivalent of trying to start Homestuck. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's up there with Homestuck in terms of, um, it feels like an insurmountable mountain and therefore I won't start. Mm. Um, Thank you for making a bite-sized version. Exactly. And I generally, like, I like the, the approach they've taken with their, their edits and, like, like having having watched the first hour long episode that that was made, mm -hmm. yeah, you can you can cut out things like the thing in the first episode of Naruto where like fifteen minutes is spent like oh isn't it funny that he's he's got the, that Naruto's got the shits and oh like there's there's some is just that like... why he runs like that? <laughs> <laughs> there's 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 a whole thing that like there's okay so I'm going to talk about some, some early Naruto just to contextualize. There's a reason that exists in the first episode. What they're trying to get across is Naruto drinks some curdled milk at the start of the thing, and what they're trying to get oh. across is he's an orphan, he's got no parents, the village is shunning him because of reasons that become quickly apparent. He is a kid that is trying to survive on his own and really isn't doing it very well, mm -hmm. and he, he's got curdled milk in his house and hasn't noticed before he's consumed it because he's, he's a fucking kid, he's... He, he just needs someone to care about him. This village is not raising this child. Exactly. And they, that's, that is a meaningful addition to the narrative. Mm -hmm. But what is not needed is the 15 minutes of slapstick about, oh, I ate the curdle milk now, I need to ship myself, oh, I'm going to ship myself, oh, that's bad. Like, none of that is in any okay. way needed. And, like, those are the kind of things where it's like, yeah, keep the bit that's important, and you can have silly, wacky Naruto, but you don't necessarily need the 15 minutes of I'm going to shit myself. Mm. That that can maybe be cut so that you can get into the... Because, in like, it's right at the start of the show. It's a real pacing killer to have, like, mm. here's our real dramatic fantasy world. Anyway, 15 minutes of shit slapstick. Mm -hmm. so, wow, that feels like really early to be getting the padding in there. Yeah, right. Like, Naruto, I love it, but it's got a real problem with that. Unless that is somebody's, like, big thing. It's, 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 it's a lot. So, yeah, um, it is called the Ocean Edit. Okay. Um, if you go look up that YouTube video, there will be a link to a Twitter account, which will link to, uh, occasionally drop links to a place where maybe that, that fan edit can be oh, found. Oh, I love it when a fan edit does that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's this link that's mysteriously appeared for what's a couple this, of hours? What's this a Google Doc that we can update as often as we want yeah. that is linked in our YouTube description? It's 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 got that vibe. <laughs> so, um, if you can track it down, I'm only like, I've only watched the first episode, but it's it feels like so much... Like, if I was going to introduce Naruto to someone, I'm already getting the vibe, this would be how I would do it. This is a much easier recommend. Yay! Um, you watched anything else this week? That is everything I've watched. <gasps> well then, it's time for this. Hello, we've got a new sponsor! Who's our new sponsor? Well, today's sponsor is... Look over there! Oh! Tell, tell me about the sponsor. Are you a politician who has pissed off even your strongest supporters? N no, but... Need I'm a distraction? I I'm sure that there Hit is... Hit the big red button and one random distraction will be deployed, ranging from an announcement of a national celebration to the renovation of a national landmark to a meteor attack on minorities or just some loud sirens and flashing lights. Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a lot. Yes. Sensory only. Ah. But they will distract the public. Yeah. I mean, I don't need this, but, you know, you never know who listens to this show. Yeah. If you're, for some reason, a Tory, maybe doing research, I don't know, then this, I guess, I guess you could have... QMPS, 2-0, whatever the fuck the episode is, it's been three weeks, I've lost track. I mean, at the very least, if we make some money out of you, like, you, you're going to make distractions anyway, we might as well get a cut out of it. Plus, they're Tories, we'll probably make, you know, a big amount. And it's about time, and then we can actually trickle that shit down to people. Trickle down economics can exist. I prefer pinata economics. Ah, smack it with a big stick. Until all the money falls out. Exactly. Yay! Inside the boardroom of Supremacy Software. Hi. Hi. So, uh, we got a got a bit of a problem. Yeah. We got a got got a. In one of those things where we, we made promises and we didn't deliver them and it's coming back to buy us on the ass a little. What? But yeah, we just are, a little. We just say stuff sometimes, yeah. right? People just say stuff. So, like, look, you know how sometimes 
we need the share price to go up. So we announce the thing that everyone numbers wants go and therefore up. number yeah. goes up. But also it's expensive to make games, so we don't actually make it. We just, you know, eternally yeah. go, oh, it's delayed. Oh, we'll let you know when it's ready. And we just don't yeah. release it. But the share number went up because yeah. theoretically it's coming. Yeah. So um, we've been doing that a lot. Right, right. Like a lot, a lot. I mean, what, what, what can that be? Can we three or four pro projects, maybe? Oh, we have like fifteen projects, right. like major projects right. that, like, some of them have been like six years in the works, and yeah. Um, so maybe we just say that uh, actually, it's, it's. Uh, we don't feel that the time is right for that project, or that, uh, despite our best efforts, uh, we, we we think it might be best to just retire the idea and uh, rededicate our resources to see, like. That's a solution, but yeah. uh, that might make the, the the numbers go down because the thing we promised oh. isn't coming. So I, I vote we we double down. Right. I vote we double down. We and say a sequel. Uh, the the game. Oh, that's an interesting idea. I was gonna say we make we we promise that the game is so big and powerful it just won't work on current hardware. And maybe if there's future consoles, we'll you know reconsider it then because we want it to be the biggest and best possible. We're cryogenically freezing the game until such time as technology has caught up with our vision. Exactly, and maybe that's uh, next console generation, maybe that's 30 years from now, maybe that's 100 years from now when I'm not in a position of authority and it's not my problem. Wait, you're not going for the, the head in a jar thing? I'm going for the head in a jar thing, but I'm not yeah. going to still be working here, I'm just going to be retired as a head in the jar. Oh, I was planning to stay here forever. Oh, Ruling I mean, over it like some kind look, of what, uh, medieval One, one of us should probably do that, but I do yeah. like the thought of just like, you know, being installed in like the, the, the I don't know what they'll have had. They'll have to install me in by then, but they'll probably have something cool. Well, I was thinking probably just get some kind of, uh, I guess it'll look kind of like tentacles, but they're all just whips, and I just flail them around. And okay, no, I'm back in. Uh, I'm staying here and working here forever. Yeah, that's you the way. Are a together fucking... forever. <laughs> Fogging interns. Sure, you are a fucking genius. I know. So, <gasps> what have you put in your ears? Uh, not not a not a lot new. I've done a lot of just listening to my existing music collection because. Everything has been different because travel and lack of routine. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a couple of things I've listened to. Um, a, a lot of it is stuff that I've heard many times over and over. Um, one in particular I got back into listening to Despite What You've Been Told by Two Gallants, mm -hmm. which is another one of those tracks that I got from the Night Vale weather back in the day. And... I was going to say, I yeah. recognise that from season one. Yeah, see, fairly, yeah. Early? fairly early Night Vale track. It's so good. I find it really... The vocal line is very satisfying to sing along with. It's it's some of the most wonderful like lyrical and vocal work I've heard in a song. It's very mm. good. Um, I did listen to a couple of new things. I listened yeah. to uh, "A Better Home" by We Are the Union. Yay! Uh, yay! I is... like We Are the Union. We Are oh, the Union good. Yeah. Uh, so sort of Scar track about trying to overcome apathy and. Getting over that feeling of filling your life with noise because the silence is a lot. Mm -hmm. But in a sort of upbeat Scar way, um, which is always Replace fun. Replace it with Scar instead. Yeah. <laughs> Replace <laughs> the silence with Scar. Um, and I listened to a track called Terrible Times by Bantams, which is a very sort of upbeat, fast-paced track that has, like, the energy of rock but the sound of pop. Okay. Um, if you made a rock track out of pop instruments... That's kind of the way I would describe this. Okay. Um, but like the the very sort of pop upbeat sound very deliberately clashes with the the lyric and the vocal line mm -hmm. about romanticizing being a carefree, oblivious but kind of chaotic youth. Huh. Uh, it's a neat little track. Nice. Uh, what about you? You listen to anything? I'm just week? briefly skipping back to the way of the union. Joe has a new album coming out. Oh yeah. Um, which they are. I think self-publishing so I believe that will probably be out in the next day or so and you can get vinyl versions of it and all sorts of other things Ooh. I know this because a lot of their videos come up on my TikTok <laughs> yeah. um, because I have followed them as Scartoon Network and oh I didn't realise that was oh that is them yes, yes. okay sorry <laughs> I, I now see I now understand the excitement a second ago yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Um, we are the union are very good, and and Scar Scarty Network has been very good, and I'm sure Jazz' current project will be awesome as well. So mm. maybe something to look out for if you like a bit of Scar. 
Apparently, they're having terrible trouble getting anyone to report on the album because uh, big uh, musical outlets keep going, why would we report on a Scar album? Why wouldn't you? It's right. Scar's Scar. Great. Scar's great. Scar is joyous. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to list off a bunch of things. I've listened to a lot of music while I've been writing. So, <laughs> uh, um, yes. Because second draft's in the mix. So I have listened to about 50 hours of lo-fi beats to study and relax to various Zephox, uh, music, uh, Zephox music on YouTube uh, chiptune mi- mixes. Uh, I've listened to a bunch of Game Chops mixes, including Zelda and Chill 1 and 2. The Legend of Synthwave Deluxe Edition, Samus and Chill, Chill Tendo, Chill Tendo 2, Nook and Chill, which is Animal Crossing stuff, Chocobo and Chill, which is Final Fantasy stuff, uh, and a few hours of the Video Game Study Lounge uh, channel, which is just Game Chops Radio. Whoa! So lots of good chiptune slash uh, glitchy um, game reimaginings, like OC Remix yeah. type stuff. Really good uh, mixes to rewrite a book to about yeah. video games. If you have a book about video games to rewrite and need some music to do it to, there's some recommendations. There's a lot of game jobs there, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, oh, well, that's everything I've listened to. Well then, time for this. <laughs> yes, wash your hands now you're home from the grocery store. Little do you know that when you put the can, the infected can, into the cupboard with your freshly washed hands and then touch your face, I, I was allowed to get in. <laughs> oh, it's you. Oh, you've, you've heard of me. Quake with fear. Hmm. Yeah, we were wondering when you were going to show up, Covid. Yes, so say, oh, no, vid, it's Covid, and cower, cower a bit, go on. I, I, I think you've misunderstood the situation. Um, we are fully vaccinated. Yeah, we've been, we're have been ready for this. We've been preparing our defences for a while. Vaccinated, is it? Not boosted, though. Uh-huh. Oh, no, we're boosted. Oh, oh, oh um, well, uh, I'm still here, so you're going to have to deal with that one way or another. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. You're the one trapped in here with us. We're going to kick your ass. Are you just a little bean, minding your own little beansness? Has capitalism happened at you? Mm-hmm. Maybe you've been forced to work to take part in a group project. Maybe you had to be part of a society. Oh, no. Oh, no. If you're just a little bean and this has happened to you, then you're entitled to compensation, a nap, and a little snacky snack. Yeah. <laughs> just head over to our website, click the big button that says, I'm just a little bean and they made me do stuff, and we'll do the rest. You just get on with being a precious little bean, and we thank you for all the joy you bring to the world. Mm-hmm. Thank you, little bean. Mm-hmm. Rest well. <sighs> Look how cute they're doing, you little snooze. <sighs> oh. Do you know what I want to see more of? What do you want to see more of? Brochure Justice Warriors. Brochure Justice Warriors? Yeah. Alright, Larry. Alright, Larry. How are you doing? Uh, not, 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 not me best, mate. I'll be honest. No, no, I'm a little rough myself. Yeah, yeah you, uh, you been up to much? Well, you know, I've, I've, I've been thinking about something a little bit positive. Oh, you know, in a, in oh. a rare little turn of events. Well, you know, it's obviously ni- nice to have some good news to talk yeah. about. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it came out of some bad news, but some good news came out of it. Well, you know, some, sometimes that's how it is. Yeah, you see all the uh, UK uh, LGBT organisations that uh, pulled out of that government uh, conference recently. Yeah, it was lovely to see not only uh, people pulling out, but making very public statements yeah. of unity with the trans community um, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. after the government had gone we're banning con- conversion therapy no we're not okay we will but only for LGB people and not for trans yeah because that's the thing it's like it's been it's been clear for a while that LGB it, it, you know trans people are being used as a wedge issue to oh, trans- yeah. the LGBT community and uh, trying to be picked off from the crowd and there was I think fairly so a lot of uh, suspicion that the way that that uh, that conversion therapy ban was leaked and then not might have been a little bit orchestrated to be like, oh no, Let's terrible. Test the water. Yeah, terrible. They're not banning conversion therapy. Oh, they've done a good U turn and they are banning it and like trying to sneak the yeah, uh, tra- yeah, yeah. trans not covered bit, you know, under the rug. But like, or, or rather, fe- pe- maybe hoping that people would be so celebratory of what they well, had achieved that ex- they wouldn't. Exactly. Like, if you see the reporting initially when it's like uh, lesbian, gay, bi people were going to be protected from conversion therapy, 
you know, uh, there was a lot of celebration and a lot of I'm, like, I'm, oh, you know, we, I'm, oh, we did it. We I'm, did. I'm very happy that that's not going to happen to them. But yeah. it was so nice to see them turning around and saying, hey, we are not going to attend this Safe to Be Me conference when you are not, not providing uh, any environment where it's safe. Yeah. And I mean, the reason why this is so reassuring, I think, is because for a while it has felt like... It is felt worryingly like the lesbian, gay, bisexual, cis community is uh, somewhat fallen into a bit of a, a routine of um, trans stuff is not our problem. Like, not yeah. not seemingly, seemingly not, you know, taking seriously the trans community's concerns or seeing that it could very easily apply to them too. And I think it was very reassuring seeing this big act of, of unity and solidarity yeah. in the UK of like, a reassurance of the the LGBT community and particularly the cis community yeah. can come together and go not without trans people. You protect yeah. trans people too. We are all one big thing. You you protect all of us or you are failing all of us. Yeah. And it, perhaps it is, you know, uh, a lot of just, you know, very noisy uh, people uh, in the LGB community who have, you know, obviously we've had the, the whole get the L out thing, yeah. which was, you know, pleasantly counterbalanced by uh, a, a large group of uh, cis lesbians who were willing to march with uh, the Brighton Trans Pride in yeah. order to, you know, act as a buffer should uh, uh, any gender critical uh, turfy types turn up and, and cause a problem there. You know, there was a, a real outcry with yeah. when um, Women's Place UK... Uh, marched in, I believe it was the the London Pride. Yeah, it, it's been nice to see that you know, despite perhaps a, a few noisy folks on on Twitter, of course. Yeah, uh, you know, saying well, it's not our problem, and you know, you fight your oh. own problems, or, or you know, just being bigoted, or uh, whatever else. That yeah. actually, the the oh. large there is a larger community, despite what some people yeah. will try and pretend. There is a community, and they. We are standing together. And the other thing I'll say is, as much as I, you know, appreciate things like the, um, you know, the L, L with the T, you know, yeah. those lesbian groups coming out to support, a lot of those things are very, like, reactive, um, performative things, where it's like, we will show up and be like, yes, we will say trans rights in your presence. This felt different a little bit, in that it felt like groups and organisations actively coming together to make a concerted push to be vocal and loud against the government about this. Yeah. And particularly, like, you know, to actively pull out of something that the government considered a really big deal. And the fact that there was, like, there is n there has been no picket line crossing about this. Yeah. Basically, every organisation has gone, we are united on this. We will not enter that, that building. We will not support that event. We stand with the trans community. Yeah. I, I'd sort of given up on hoping that no, that was still possible. It was a beautiful and... thing, and it, it certainly raised a lot, you know, my spirits a lot, because, you know, I've seen yeah. so much of this happening uh, to the trans community in the last few years, and uh, you know, people will accuse you of being hyperbolic when you say exactly yeah. what is happening. And then th there was this moment where we, uh, the government went full mask off, and everyone came together for that. And I really hope that that can be mobilised, because oh, it's yeah. great that that one moment has happened, we need to go, right, all of you groups, you have all made a big public show of saying that you, you know, no, no, you know, liberation without the trans community too. You need to keep up to that. This cannot yeah. be a one-off. You need to have that same energy for everything going on right now. I mean, we've already been seeing very good things. I know we had a big protest in, in Brighton over yeah. this weekend, I believe. We've had uh, one in Manchester recently. We had a huge demonstration... Uh, in London, what a week and a half ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where they had about three thousand people here. Although the BBC, it was surprising at all that they did uh, report on the matter. But the, the fact that they covered it as hundreds show up for for I protest. Mean, I'm, I'm I'm just glad they got mentioned at all, considering yeah. the BBC's uh, willingness to ignore protests going on. Yeah, absolutely. It was it really felt like you know quite a, a big moment, and the fact that we have now had that over you know several events and, and i hope that there were more I, I hear that people are still talking about um protesting in london on the date that the event was originally going to go ahead yeah yeah and hopefully uh you know we see that sport continue absolutely absolutely <sighs> hug mate oh please <sighs>
Ah, good oak, mate. Good oak. Uh, All right. Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll have have a nap. So, Laura. Yes. Uh, we 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 mentioned the book. Yeah. We should probably talk about the book. We got a book. Yeah, we got a book. We've we've been working our socks off getting a re redraft done. (laughs) Yeah. This is this is your first time doing that. It's yes. it's it's a thing, huh? First draft we had in months. I've yeah. put like sixty hours in in the last week. Yeah, the first draft you have all the time in the world. Redrafts, it's like forget it, the ground and go. Do it, do but, it now. There's a deadline. Ah, but the book this is, is why I failed at school. But we, we, the books, the books coming along really well. I'm, yeah. I, I feel like the second draft is a big improvement on the first. I could like have done without the COVID on top of it, but yeah, the COVID didn't help. Yeah. But we, we got there. We did it. Yeah. Now we're gonna probably collapse for like a day. I haven't finished. I've still got more to do today. Oh yeah, you are like eight pages. I'm nanoseconds from away from the you're end. Right near the end. I'm so Tomo- ready. Tomorrow is rest day for us both. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to go check out that book and support, you know, the, the, justify the... our life choices. Indeed, go check out Who Hunts the Whale on Unbound. Unbound.com slash book slash whale. It's about video games and the industry that makes them. Mm-hmm. And go. how that maybe that's not as good as you might think it is yeah. from just playing fun games. Go go give go give that a look so that we can justify the the process of redrafting a novel. Mm-hmm. Uh, should I talk about the other? Tell things, us about the other book. Tell us about My Dysphoria Monster. Me. Well, My Dysphoria Monster in Me is a children's book. It's illustrated. It's coming out on August 18th, 2022. That's like mere months away now. Mm-hmm. Uh, about four months away. Gosh. Yeah. Um, there are some reviews starting to pop up in certain places and it's reviewing, it's reviewing real good and I'm very proud yeah. of it. Uh, other than that, you can find me at Laura K. Buzz pretty much everywhere. Twitter, Twitch, uh, YouTube, TikTok, Patreon. That's the one that pays the bills. Just go search Laura K. Buzz, you'll find me on all the things. Mm-hmm. What about you? What about me? Well, oh gosh, it's been so long since I did this and I I don't repeat it very often. I know. Uh, all of my links can be found at streamylinks.com slash janiac, J-A-N-E-I-A-C. Um, I have a... a, 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 a I'm going to edit that. I have... I'm probably <laughs> not. Uh, I have a Patreon, that's patreon.com slash stonedmonkeyradio. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help me justify... Everything, everything I did, everything. and you can help me. You can help me justify occasionally releasing my brain into the wild when there's no queer and pleasant strangers. So we just make a thing and hope for the best. Mm. Um, but in in the same time, it usually takes to make and record an episode of Queer and Pleasant Strangers. Ha! <laughs> um, yeah, I make T-shirts. They're available over on my Red Bull. There's lots of cool stuff. You should ch- check it out and, and help me, again, justify my life. Streamerlinks.com slash janiac, J-A-N-E-I-A-C, and patreon.com slash Radio. Laura, <gasps> will you sing us out, please, darling? Until next time, be a stranger. <laughs>